Greetings, all gallant sailors on YouTube. Welcome to Abyssal Recap. Today we'll sail our way back to 2004, to witness action-adventure movie, called, National Treasure. Spoilers alert. Buckle up and take care. Benjamin Franklin Gates was an American historian, cryptographer, and treasure hunter. When he was young, his grandfather John told him that Charles Carroll passed on a secret to their ancestor in 1832. A fabled national treasure was hidden in America by the Knights Templar. The clue leading to the treasure was the phrase The Secret Lies with Charlotte. While Ben was convinced by the story, his skeptical father, Patrick, dismissed it as nonsense. As time went by, Ben has grown up. He still insists on treasure hunting day after day, and now he has also obtained degrees in history and mechanical engineering. He worked with his friend Riley an investor called Ian Howe. With years of research, they finally found Charlotte's secret. It was a ship wreckage named Charlotte, but there was nothing on the ship except gunpowder. Ben took another careful look around, and found that the captain's corpse was holding a bucket. He opened the bucket finding a delicate box containing an ivory pipe. Then he spilled blood on it, and rolled it on a white paper to print out the texts. After deciphering the mystery word by word, he soon analyzed that the treasure map would be on the back of the Declaration of Independence, but the DOI was one of the most important documents in history. The museum would never allow them to do any chemical tests on it. However, Ian who had been engaged in illegal activities, decided to steal the Declaration of Independence. Ben was firmly opposed to this, and would not provide follow-up cooperation. Ian threatened Ben and Riley, but Ben said that there were more puzzles to be solved. Without him, Ian would never be able to obtain the treasure. He ignited the explosives all over the floor with flair. Ian locked them in the cabin and ran away. Ben also managed to escape from the secret passage and fled before the explosion. Later, Ben went to the FBI to report the case but no one believed him. He also went to the National Archives and met Abigail, a doctor engaged in studying the Declaration of Independence who didn't trust him either. Ben, who had no choice, decided to steal the Declaration of Independence before Ian. The DOI was heavily guarded. Under the one-inch-thick bulletproof glass, there were tons of sensors and thermal detectors. As long as they were close, they would trigger the alarm. If the DOI was not displayed, then it would be directly sent and locked in a four-foot-thick steel plate. But Ben found that there was a storage room for repair and maintenance. At that time, the Declaration of Independence will be less guarded. This weekend's fest event would be the best time to start the operation. During preparation, Riley succeeded hacking into the system. Ben forged the staff's credentials and gave an antique coin coated with chemical liquid to Abigail. Then Riley pretended taking photos and triggered the thermal detector to make Abigail entering the access code and transfer the DOI to the storage room. That night, Ben entered the fest as a staff member. He quickly changed his clothes and mixed into the banquet. He approached Abigail, as normal guest, and then took the wine glass from her hand, to copy her fingerprints. Then, sneaked through the guards and opened the elevator leading to the storage room. With Riley's help, he easily gained access to the storage room. But Ian also arrived at the storage room. Ben did not dare to waste time. He grabbed the DOI and ran away. At the corridor, seeing Ian, Ben raised the Declaration of Independence to block the shots with its bulletproof glass. He retreated into the elevator quickly took out DOI and rolled it up. At the same time, Abigail felt suspicious about Ben. She asked her colleagues but to find Ben was not on the invitation list. Meanwhile, Ben tried to leave via the gift shop but got caught by the clerk mistaking his DOI as a souvenir copy. So he bought an additional DOI for later use. As he was leaving, Abigail, confronted him and took the fake DOI. Ian promptly kidnaps her, but Ben and Riley chased after for rescue, tricking Ian by leaving behind a souvenir copy of the declaration. Later, Ben told Abigail that he was doing this to protect the Declaration of Independence, but Abigail did not believe him at all. Ben had to go to his father Patrick's house. In order to prevent Ben from damaging historical artifacts, Abigail offered to help him analyzing the DOI. They smeared lemon juice on the back of the Declaration of Independence, but no information emerged. Patrick asked Ben to try with heat. Then they found numbers on the DOI. However, the clue was Ottendorf cipher which was a combination of three groups of figures representing the page and the letter of the line. They can only decrypt it with Franklin's letter but Patrick had already donated the letter to the museum. The three went there and paid a kid to copy the designated letter for them. Through the letter, Ben analyzed that the next clue would be at Independence Hall. There, he found a special pair of glasses on a brick at 2.22 p.m. The three immediately used it to go through the DOI again. This time, they saw more clues through the glasses. However, 
Ian came to maraud the DOI and glasses. Ben and others separately bail out. After an intense chase, Ben took the glasses away but with the DOI being taken. When Ben was raring to leave the scene, FBI arrested him. Abigail planned a rescue to save him. She told Ian about the clue, and Ian used the declaration as stake to lure the FBI permitting Ben to meet him. The FBI accepted Ian's deal and sent Ben to the place. In the crowd, a man pretending to be a tourist passed message to Ben, Ben listened and stepped onto the deck and jumped into the sea. There were crew helping him to escape. When he was saved, Ian took Patrick and Abigail as hostage. Ben was forced to provide Ian with more clues. After an in-depth research, he located the Trinity Church. Through further analysis, they found a secret passage behind a tomb. Ben took down the torch at the entrance to illuminate the way. The team followed the tunnel and saw a stairway with chandelier. However, the stairs began to collapse due to its 200 years of deterioration, nearly killing everyone. They later found an elevator to the bottom of the cave, but found nothing. Ian was very angry and forced Ben to tell him other clues, but Ben insisted that they had reached the end, and the treasure must have been transported. As Ian was leaving them behind to die, Patrick immediately told him that it was a reference to the midnight ride of Paul Revere, pointing Ian to the old North Church in Boston. Hearing this, Ian still left them deep under. But he don't know what he got was a false clue, the real one still lies deep inside the cave. As expected, Ben found a hidden door leading to the interior, but it was still empty. He was desperate at this time, but Patrick calmly stated that his family had exhausted six generations and could not find the treasure. Now Ben has proved that the treasure really exists. Now as long as they continue, it's only a matter of time till they find it. Ben regained his spirit and looked carefully at every corner. Suddenly, he found a socket with the same shape as the ivory pipe. He put the pipe into it and turned it around. Another hidden door opened instantly, and the four walked in witnessing countless treasures. Ben lit the oil lamp in the center, as the fire spreads, more valuables unveiled their existence. Piles of gold, ancient artifacts, priceless documents, which would worth tens of billion dollars. Moreover, there was an exit could take them finally back to the ground. At last, Ben returned the Declaration of Independence to the FBI, and also entrusted the treasures to the country. He just wanted his family to be credited for the honor of finding them. On the other side of the country, Ian, who arrived in Boston, was arrested by the FBI while breaking into the church. Ben refused the 10% reward given by the state of treasure, he took only 1% of it, and divided it into two parts, half to Riley, and half to himself and Abigail, who now has become his wife. That's the end of today's video. If you do enjoy watching it, feel free to leave a like and consider to subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next one. Abyssal signing out.